What is gonna happen? Oh, get out of there! <laughs> What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another movie reaction. This time, my first time watching, and I want to read this in full. Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Now, I do know of this movie's existence, guys. I do know it's also directed by Stanley Kubrick, who I absolutely love. He did The Shining, one of my favorite films of all time. I will say, though, I didn't know that that was the full title. I just always saw people calling it Dr. Strangelove. Now, this has a very high score on IMDb, and it's rated PG. How are you going to keep someone like myself engaged at a PG level when I'm so used to PG-13, rated R, and just all around wild movies? But now that I think about it, I believe 12 Angry Men was also rated PG, and that movie was phenomenal. But enough talking, let's get to watching, guys. But before we do, if you guys do appreciate my content and want to support the channel, make sure to hit that big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel today to join the Flix Talk family. And if you guys want to go a step further with your generosity, make sure to hit that super thanks button down below. All right, Flix Talkers, without further ado, 1964's Dr. Strangelove. All right, it is the stated position of the U.S. Air Force that their safeguards would prevent the occurrence of such events as are depicted in this film. Furthermore, it should be noted that none of the characters portrayed in this film are meant to represent any real person living or dead. Okay. Kind of intrigued with the disclaimer like that. I forgot to mention too, guys, I know nothing about this movie at all. I always see like a crazy character, like looking like a madman on the main poster, but yeah. For more than a year, ominous rumors had been privately circulating among high-level Western leaders that the Soviet Union had been at work on what was darkly hinted to be the ultimate weapon, a doomsday device. For a movie presumably about a bomb, this intro is, you know, the contrast is like on the complete opposite spectrum of what I'm thinking this is going to be about. Group Captain Mandrake speaking. This is General Ripper speaking. Yes, sir. The base is being put on condition red. It's not a good idea. I keep the men on their toes. Group Captain, I'm afraid this is not an exercise. It looks like we're in a shooting war. Oh, dang. Oh, uh, hell. I want you to transmit plan R. R for Robert. Is it that bad, sir? It looks like it's pretty hairy. Yes, sir. As I previously arranged, air police will have lists of all owners, and I want every single one of them collected without exception. And after you've done that, report back to me. Oh, it definitely sounds like it's about to get hairy. <laughs> Each B-52 can deliver a nuclear bomb load of 50 megatons, equal to 16 times the total explosive force of all the bombs and shells used by all the armies in World War II. Oh. But they have one geographical factor in common. They are all two hours from their targets inside Russia. Major Kong. I know you think this is crazy, but I just got a message from base over the CRM-114. He called his wing attack plan R. Did you say wing attack plan R? Yes, sir, I have. Oh, man, what does this mean? They're like, wing attack plan R. What? This, this seems like, come on, let me know what the hell this is about. <laughs> you guys are keeping me on edge. An old ripper wouldn't be giving us plan R unless them Ruskies had already clobbered Washington and a lot of other towns with a sneak attack. Well, boys, I reckon this is it. Nuclear combat toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ruskies. <laughs> oh, he's ready with, the, with his cowboy hat. <laughs> this thing turns out to be half as important as I figured it just might be, I'd say that you're all in line for some important promotions and personal citations when this thing's over with. And that goes for every last one of you, regardless of your race, color, or your creed. Now let's get this thing on the hump. We got some flying to do. Yeah, how do you think that quick, like, 
it's just on your toes, man, of like what to say to your men because you've never been in this situation before, this plan R. It's got to be tough, man. Oh, yes, General Turgidson is here, but I'm afraid he can't come to the phone at the moment. Well, this is his secretary, Miss Scott. Apparently, they monitored a transmission about eight minutes ago from Burpleson Air Force Base. It decoded as wing attack, plan R. Tell him to call, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, base Commander Ripper. I have to think of everything on it. He says he's tried personally several times, but everything is dead. Even the normal phone lines are shut down. Wow. Are you sure it's plan R? All right, tell you what you better do, old buddy. You better give Elmo and Charlie a blast and bump everything up to condition red and stand by the blower. I'll get back. You just start your countdown, and old Bucky will be back here before you can say, blast off. That was an interesting scene right there. You always hear the vague talks about the secretary, you know, canoodling. But this one, they kind of did it, not in a comical way, but they just showed you what it was. I have always expected the best from you. And you have the nation is counting on us. We are not going to let them down. Good luck to you all. All those top secret documents, that's crazy. Code prefix locked. Auto destruct circuits checked. I love these zoom in shots with the camera on a tripod because it really sets the tension of like, you may not know exactly what everything is. Like, I don't know anything in this jet that they're in, but I can tell something's coming. Excuse me, sir. Something rather interesting has just cropped up. Mandrake. Yes, sir. I thought I issued instructions for all radios on this base to be impounded. Sir, Captain. You know, after all, well, let's face it, we, we don't want to start a nuclear war unless we really have to, do we? <laughs> Please sit down and turn that thing off. Uh-oh. Captain, the planes are not going to be recalled. My attack orders have been issued and the orders stand. If a Russian attack was in progress, we would certainly not be hearing civilian broadcasting. If a Russian attack was not in progress, then your use of Plan R... Yeah. What's really going on? <sighs> a decision is being made by the President and the Joint Chiefs in the war room at the Pentagon. And when they realize there is no possibility of recalling the wing, there will be only one course of action open. Total commitment. War is too important to be left to politicians. They have neither the time, the training, nor the inclination for strategic thought. They can no longer sit back and allow communist infiltration, communist indoctrination, communist subversion, and the international communist conspiracy to sap and impurify all of our precious bodily fluids. I love this shot right here. It's like an upward... Uh, I, I don't know if I've seen a shot like that. It's kind of an unflattering shot if you think about it. But it works so well just from, you know, down under. Really invokes something in you. This steady shot on this, on this guy. Now, General Turgeson, what's going on here? General Jack Ripper issued an order to the 34 B-52s of his wing, which were airborne at the time. Now, it appears that the order called for the planes to uh, attack their targets inside Russia. The uh, planes are fully armed with nuclear weapons with an average load of um, 40 megatons each. The aircraft began penetrating Russian radar cover within uh, 25 minutes. Wow. Plan R is an emergency war plan in which a lower echelon commander may order nuclear retaliation after a sneak attack if the normal chain of command has been disrupted. You uh, approved it, sir. You must remember. Oh, wow. That's an interesting stipulation. I mean, he didn't read the fine print. None of us do, but... Well, I assume then that the planes will return automatically once they reach their fail-safe points. You see, the planes were holding at their fail-safe points um, when the go code was issued. Now, once they fly beyond fail-safe, they, uh, they do not require a second order to proceed. They will continue until they reach the target. Wow. One of the provisions of Plan R provides that once the go code is received, 
the normal SSB radios in the aircraft are switched into a special coded device. The CRM-114 is designed not to receive at all unless the message is preceded by the correct three-letter code group prefix. But since there are uh, 17,000 permutations, it's going to take us about two and a half days to transmit them all. <laughs> How soon did you say the planes would penetrate Russian radar cover? Like 20 minutes. About 18 minutes now, sir. <laughs> General Ripper called the Strategic Air Command headquarters shortly after he issued the go code. I have a port... <laughs> no, he called you while you were the secretary. Hello. I told you never to call me here. Don't you know where I am? But look, baby, I can't, I can't talk to you now. <laughs> My president needs me. <laughs> Listen, Chuck, don't forget to say your prayers. <laughs> you dealing with this drama at work and like the most important decision of our lives, pretty much. It is the avowed policy of our country never to strike first with nuclear weapons. That was not an act of national policy, and there are still alternatives left open to us. But it is necessary now to make a choice, to choose between two admittedly regrettable post-war environments. One where you got 20 million people killed, and the other where you got 150 million people killed. I will not go down in history as the greatest mass murderer since Adolf Hitler. Perhaps it might be better, Mr. President, if you were more concerned with the American people than with your image in the history books. Hmm. But they have the ambassador waiting upstairs. Is that the Russian ambassador you're talking about? Yes, it is, General. Am I to understand the Russian ambassador is to be admitted to entrance to the, the war room? That is correct. He is here on my orders. I, I don't know exactly how to put this, sir, but are you aware of what a serious breach of security that would be? I mean, you'll see everything. You'll you, you see the big board. That is precisely the idea, General. That is precisely the idea. There's a lot going on right now, but I'm definitely engaged. 145 caliber automatic. Two boxes of ammunition, one miniature combination Russian phrase book and Bible, $100 in rubles, one issue of prophylactics, three lipsticks, three pair of nylon stockings. What do you need the nylons for and the lipstick? <laughs> Our premier is a man of the people, but he is also a man, if you follow my meaning. <laughs> what did you say? I said Premier Kissoff is a degenerate atheist. Mr. President, I formally request that we have a You filthy bully, you filthy bully, you filthy guy, you autistic bastard. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room. <laughs> Look at this, Mr. President, this is a lousy commie rat was taking pictures with this thing of the big board. Mr. Ambassador, <laughs> this clumsy fool attempted to plant that ridiculous camera on me. <laughs> like that, that was a wild little interaction right there. So much seriousness going on, but then a lot of like comical, you know, dialogue and situations happening, but that are not really comical, but they're just kind of playing off like almost like a skit, you know, but I couldn't help but laugh. It's, it's just bizarre. <laughs> I've done as you asked. Be careful, Mr. President. I think he's drunk. Hello, Dimitri. Listen, I, I can't hear too well. Do you suppose you could turn the music down just a little? Yes. Fine, I can hear you now, Dimitri. This guy to go, Clear. man. <laughs> well, then, as you say, we're both coming through fine. Good. Well, it's good that you're fine, then, and, and I'm fine. <laughs> I agree with you. It's great to be fine. <laughs> the bomb, Dimitri. One of our base commanders, he had a sort of, well, he went a little funny in the head. He went and did a silly thing. Well, I'll tell you what he did. He ordered his planes to attack your country. Uh, well, let me finish, Dimitri. <laughs> A little silly thing, huh? Why do you think I'm calling you? Just to say hello? <laughs> of course I like to speak to you. Of course I like to say hello. Oh my God. They will not reach their targets for at least another hour. 
Listen, I've been all over this with your ambassador. It is not a trick. Oh. Well, I'll tell you. We're just gonna have to help you destroy them, Dimitri. I know they're our boys. <laughs> would you believe that the American president would destroy their own American soldiers? I, no, <laughs> that would not happen. I'm very sorry. All right, you're sorrier than I am. But I am sorry as well. I am as sorry as you are, Dimitri. Don't say that you're more sorry than I am. Because <laughs> Stanley. Stanley, what are you doing with this movie, man? This is not what I expected. <laughs> but I love it. Da? Da? Uh-oh. What? The Doomsday Machine. The Doomsday Machine? The Doomsday Machine? What is that? A device which will destroy all human and animal life on Earth. All human and animal life? Uh-oh. The Ruskies got their own bomb of some sort. Have you ever seen a commie drink a glass of water? Well, yeah, I, I can't say I have. Mandrake, water is the source of all life. Seven-tenths of this Earth's surface is water. Seventy percent of you is water. You and I need fresh, pure water to replenish our precious bodily fluids. <laughs> Mandrake, have you ever heard of a thing called fluoridation? Fluoridation of water? That fluoridation is the most monstrously conceived and dangerous communist plot we have ever had to face? <laughs> Oh, he was dropping some conspiracy theories on him. I don't know if it's necessarily a conspiracy theory. I know that there's fluoride in the water, but they're definitely painting the picture of this guy losing his marbles. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Mandrake, you better get the hell out of there. <laughs> Mandrake, come over here. The redcoats are coming. Come on. This is getting more and more bizarre. <laughs> Well, thorium G has a radioactive half-life of 93 years. When they are exploded, they will produce a doomsday shroud, a cloud of radioactivity which will encircle the Earth for 93 years. Damn. It's designed to explode if any attempt is ever made to untrigger it automatically. Wow. Ah, it's an obvious comic trick, Mr. President. We're wasting valuable time. Look at the big boy. They're getting ready to clobber us. Our doomsday scheme cost us just a small fraction of what we've been spending on defense in a single year. But the deciding factor was when we learned that your country was working along similar lines. Preposterous. I've never approved of anything like that. Our source was the New York Times. <laughs> Dr. Strangelove. What is the authority granted me as director of weapons research and development? This is the guy I've seen pictures of for this movie. Then you mean it is possible for them to have built such a thing? He sounds like a Bond villain. Technology required is easily within the means of even the smallest nuclear power. Deterrence is the art of producing in the mind of the enemy the fear to attack. Gee, I wish we had one of them doomsday machines, Dainty. <laughs> this is fantastic, strange love. Whole point of the doomsday machine is lost. If you keep it a secret, why didn't you tell the world, eh? It was to be announced at the party congress on Monday. Premier loves surprises. Once again, I don't know if this writing is supposed to be intentionally satirical. I think it is. It's my first time viewing. <laughs> but this is great. Because you don't expect dialogue like this from a film that focuses on subject nature like this as well. Realize that in addition to fluoridating water, where there are studies underway to fluoridate salt, flour, fruit juices, soup, sugar, milk, ice cream, and drink, children's ice cream. Oh, you know when fluoridation first began? 1946. How does that coincide with your post-war commie conspiracy? Wow, that is scary to think about. Tell me, Jack, when did you first become, well, develop this theory? during the physical act of love. Huh. A profound sense of fatigue. Luckily, I, I was able to interpret these feelings correctly. 
Loss of essence. I can assure you it has not recurred, Mandrake. Women sense my power, and they seek the life essence. I do not avoid women, Mandrake, but I, I do deny them my essence. What is your essence exactly? <laughs> oh man, these guys are all surrendering? Damn. The boys must have surrendered. Now they let me down. Oh my god, this shot with the shadow on the side is incredible. Were you ever a prisoner of war? Uh, yes, I was, matter of fact, Jack, I was. Did they torture you? Yes, they did. I was tortured with a Japanese jacket. You know, those clowns outside are going to give me a pretty good going over in a few minutes. For the code. I happen to believe in a life after this one. He's going out with a bang or either going to kill himself or he's going to go after them guns blazing. Either way, Mandrake, get the hell out of there, buddy. <laughs> Jack, water on the back of the neck and the code. Now, now, supposing I play a little guessing game. Mandrake, you're so naive, bro. I'll try and guess what the code is. Yeah. He just said, I, I don't think I'm going to do well if I'm tortured. Like, once again, like outrageous situations that I can't help but chuckle at because they're just so extreme. This whole movie is very extreme and tense. Looks like a missile tracking us. Missile still closing, true and steady. Continue evasive action. How is something that big gonna shake off a missile tracking them? Deflection increasing, range eight miles. What? Deflection still increasing, range six miles. Kiss your ass goodbye. Missile still deflecting, range four miles. Oh God. Range two miles. Missile still deflecting. Range one mile. Missile detonated. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Ooh. They survived a missile attack. That's that's crazy stuff. He guessed it, wasn't it OPE? Uh-oh. Put your hands over your head. What the devil do you think you're doing shooting away in here? Wait, is that American guy? He said put your hands over your head. That's an American. What kind of suit you call that, fella? And I am Group Captain Lionel Mandrake. I'm General Ripper's executive officer. Where's General Ripper? He's dead in the bathroom. <whistles> now look, Colonel Bat Guano, if that really is your name. Well, I know. Don't you know that General Ripper went as mad as a bloody March Hare and sent the whole wing to attack the Soviets? Don't you know that? I'm confused. I thought the Russians were attacking. Emergency power is on. Everything seems to check out all right. The radio is gone and we're leaking fuel. If we're flying any lower while we need sleigh bells on this thing. This height, why they might harpoon us, but they dang sure ain't gonna spot us on no radar screen. Colonel, I must know what you think has been going on here. I think there's some kind of deviated prevert. I think General Ripper found out about your preversion and that you were organizing some kind of mutiny of preverts. Now move. What? All I was told to do was get General Ripper on the phone with the President of the United States. Now, General Ripper is dead, is he not? I am General Ripper's executive officer, so the President will bloody well want to speak to me, won't he? If you try any preversion, Three versions. I'm sorry, I haven't got enough change. Um, could you uh, could you make this a collect call operator? Just one second, operator. They won't accept the call. Have you got 55 cents? <laughs> that Coca-Cola machine. I want you to shoot the lock off it. There may be some change in there. I'm going to get your money for you. But if you don't get the President of the United States on that phone, you know what's going to happen to you? What? You're going to have to answer to the Coca-Cola company. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. The recall code OPE is being acknowledged. Oh wow. Ah, uh, gentlemen. Uh, I'm not a sentimentalist at all by nature, but uh, I think I know what's in every heart in this room. I think we ought to all bow our heads and give a short prayer of thanks for our deliverance. Uh, Lord! You have seen fit to deliver us from the forces of evil. Excuse me, sir. 
Premier Kissoff's calling again, and he's hopping mad. He's over there giving a prayer, <laughs> but it ain't over. <laughs> yeah, it looks like these guys might suicide bomb it into somewhere in Russia. I don't know. He says that one of the planes hasn't turned back. He says, according to information forwarded by our air staffs, it's headed for the missile complex at Laputa. He says their air defense now only claims three aircraft confirmed. The fourth may only be damaged. Dimitri, there's no point in you getting hysterical at a moment like this. <laughs> this is crazy. How are all these guys keeping a straight face? Is there really a chance for that plane to get through? The Rusky talks, man, but frankly, we think he's short of know-how. I mean, you just can't expect a bunch of ignorant peons to understand a machine like some of our boys. And that's not meant as an insult, Mr. Ambassador. I mean, you, you take your average Rusky, we all know how much guts he's got. Hell, look at, look at all of them, them Nazis killed off and they still wouldn't quit. If the pilot's good, see, he can barrel that baby in so low. I mean, <laughs> you ought to see it sometime. It's a sight, you a big plane, like a 52. Vroom! This jet exhaust frying chickens in the barnyard. <laughs> he got too excited, man. <laughs> he got too excited. <laughs> it's wildly insane how patriotic this guy is. Bomb fusing circuits, one through four test. Lights on. Bomb army test. Is that James Earl Jones? 1964. It could be him. I don't... Sounds like him, and it definitely looks like him. I could be wrong. Gotta look that up afterwards, but I think that's James Earl Jones. Check bomb door circuits one through four. It's not opening. Bomb door. Uh-oh. Bomb door circuits. Negative function. Oh, no. Someone's gonna have to manually open that thing. Everything's jammed up. Oh, they are going to have to suicide bomb it. <laughs> they got enough parachutes for all them boys. <laughs> Hi there, dear John. <laughs> so they got two nuke warheads right there. Target distance, five miles. Oh, man. It's coming down to the wire, boy. You better open that thing up. Oh, man. They don't got a chance in hell if that thing does not open. They have no fuel. They're going to be captured if they just jump out or dive out. Now's the time. Suicide bomb it or, or you know, kamikaze. Kamikaze that thing, boy. I, wh <laughs> what is going to happen? Oh, shit. Get out of there. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, he's loving it though. Oh my... Dude, he was ready to die. My heart is like, whoa. That dude didn't show any fear. He was like, let's go! <laughs> Radioactivity would never penetrate a mine some thousands of feet deep. You mean people could actually stay down there for a hundred years? It would not be difficult, my fear. Nuclear reactors could... Mine fear. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Oh, God. Nuclear reactors could provide power almost indefinitely. Greenhouses could maintain plant life. Animals could be bred and slaughtered. Dwelling space for several hundred thousand of our people could easily be provided. Oh my god. Breed prodigiously, eh? There would be much time. Stanley! Stanley, you're a fucking genius, man! You're a fucking genius. This character, god. I'm crying how awesome, like, like this is a brilliant character. <laughs> All of the satirical dialogue, once again. These guys, these guys laughing! These guys laughing in the back! Also, the Russian ambassador is dying. Bold curiosity for the adventure ahead! <laughs> <laughs> that German blood is like trying to kill himself! <laughs> He's trying to kill himself. Ratio of uh, 10 women to each man. Oh. You know, a sacrifice required for the future of the human race. 
I must confess, you have an astonishingly good idea there, Doctor. <laughs> of course he does, huh? Of course. New developments are going to cause any change in Soviet expansionist policy. I mean, we must be increasingly on the alert to prevent them from taking over other mine shaft space. Mr. President, we must not allow a mine shaft gap. I have a plan. Monsieur has been what? Wait, what happened? I don't... Before I could get out my thought of like he's walking, everything just explodes. What is that the doomsday device? I'm just thinking the whole time Dr. Strangelove is talking, like, how are they gonna have enough time to select all these people to go in this bunker? That's scary shit right there, man. With this song in the background too. Damn. Oh wow. That's how it ends. Okay. This, look. <laughs> this is almost like a Monty Python movie done seriously. What a trip. Okay, I got to get out all my thoughts, guys, in one second. But thank you so much. That was Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb from 1964. All right, guys. So, wow. First off, just wow. Wow. This movie, man, I can honestly say I've never seen a movie like this in my life. And I know I've said that a couple of times after movie watches, but this one was just so unique, especially from someone that I thought I knew his directing style. Even though I've only seen The Shining, Full Metal Jacket, A Clockwork Orange, all of the hits basically from Kubrick, which I know I gotta dive deep into his catalog and check out some of his other films, and I promise you I will. I was pleasantly surprised that this was something a little different, especially in the beginning, the buildup, the dialogue, a lot of the machinery that were shown, a lot of the subject nature about war. You really think it's gonna be one movie, at least for me, I'm just speaking on my experience here. I thought it was gonna be something completely different than what we ended up with at the end of the film. So I'll just say, through and through, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Though it had satirical nature, I felt like it was making fun of itself and situations at hand. Yeah, it dove deep into some conspiracy theories. There were just theories in general out there about fluoride, about the government possibly putting chemicals in your food and in your drinking water to make you sick. There's all these things that really make you just think in the back of your brain, hey, this could be a possibility this could be true i don't really dive deep into stuff like that guys not saying it's not true at all whatsoever i'm just looking at this as a movie goer so that was all interesting subject nature as well the doomsday device that we got introduced to by the russian ambassador at least he was talking about this device that could potentially wipe out the planet for you know a good 93 years roughly almost a hundred years and then our introduction to dr strangelove oh my god he's someone that's on the poster that i always see i thought he was going to be more of a focal point than he was though that ending scene that really made it for me like that ending dialogue with him you know having all of that german rage come out and i'm not gonna repeat it i'm not gonna repeat it you saw it you know what he said and it came off very slapsticky very satirical once again and very reminiscent of a monty python sketch but i loved it i was here for it once again i don't know i feel like this is one of those movies that you almost feel wrong for laughing at this subject nature but i couldn't and even the russian ambassador i pointed out in the background that actor was laughing when Dr. Strangelove was over in the chair. That was great. And then him finally standing up. I can fuck. And the world just blowing up. Going to shit. Yeah, I mean, till we meet again. It's like, how do you laugh at stuff like this? But I, I loved it, you know? Dark comedy stuff. I mean, I would definitely put this as a dark comedy, even though it started off more dramatic, obviously, a war film. No more explanation needed, guys. I'm gonna give Dr. Strangelove from 1964 a solid five out of five, saying I'm definitely gonna look for a 4K of this film, add it to my collection, and definitely re-watch this again in my lifetime. It was only about an hour and 35 minutes, roughly, that's perfect. I can rewatch this, show it to people that have not seen this film and pick their brain on it afterwards. And by the way, I did look it up. That was James Earl Jones. Wow, legend.
All right, Flix Talkers, what do you think of Doctor Strange Love? Let me know where you rank it out of five down in the comments below. And what were your favorite moments from this film? I would love to hear it. Let me pick your brain for a second. And before you guys go, if you guys did appreciate my reaction and like my thoughts, let me know by liking the video and consider subscribing today for so many more reactions. And if you guys want to go a step further with your support, make sure to hit that super thanks down in the description below. All right, guys, till next one, I'm gone. Peace.